The race to beat Bloodbath was, quite possibly, the greatest event in the history of Geometry Dash. At the time, the whole community stopped in order to watch it take place, and it boosted now well-known players into popularity. Everybody knows Bloodbath, and everybody knows the verifier, Riot, but not everyone knows the story of the race to be the first to beat it. This was actually one of the most interesting things in the 1.9 time period of the game. So, let's explore this piece of Geometry Dash history. The time period of 1.0 to 1.9 would be dominated by hacked extreme demons. Ice Carbon Diablo X, Cataclysm, the ultimate phase. But there was really only one of these extreme demons that was verified without hacks. And it was built by some of the biggest names in the creating community. You could say that Bloodbath is the greatest level in the history of Geometry Dash. Made by Riot and his team of gameplay creators and decorators. Some of the biggest names of the community went into the creation of this level. Etzer, G-Boy, Michigan. All really well-known creators that would build memorable parts on this level. And Riot was also the best player at the time and had unwavering support from his followers. He created possibly the greatest profile in the history of Geometry Dash. Riot was one of the most skilled players in Geometry Dash. He beat demons that were thought to be impossible, and he inspired the majority of the best players to start using 144Hz monitors. And after he verified Bloodbath on August 11th, 2015, he was considered the best player in the game. Players like Andromeda and Cyclic were also getting some attention, but both of those players had allegations of cheating and Riot had proof of streaming to back up his achievements. So naturally, he was the fan favorite. But Riot was showing signs that he was getting tired of Geometry Dash. He stopped beating extremely hard levels like Bloodbath, and he stopped raising the bar for what could be done as far as difficulty. And his growth as a player would peak at the verification of Bloodbath. The community was still on Riot's side, but they were looking for a player to carry the torch when Riot would quit the game. Obviously, Riot didn't quit Geometry Dash. It's just not something that happens. So, Riot would eventually return. But at the time, the community was looking for a new player to rally behind. And while other Mega Collabs and Extreme Demons were being worked on, and the levels featured in the game were declining in quality, the race to be Bloodbath would be the center of attention for the playing community. And whoever could beat Bloodbath first would have great potential for the future of the game, and would have the support of the community. The days after Bloodbath released, people would upload progress runs of less than 20% to YouTube. The level had just come out, so nobody really knew the full scope of the difficulty. But as some of you may know, the beginning of Bloodbath is one of the easiest parts for a lot of people. Even a player like me, whose hardest demon is 1929, can get to the Michigan part with a bit of practice. Bloodbath's difficulty is fairly unbalanced compared to some other extreme demons. And at the time, this was even more true than it is today. Flying used to be much of a harder thing to do back in 1.9, because most of the older levels didn't have too much to do with flying timings. So when Bloodbath came out, people didn't really know how to react. Most of these players wouldn't have the advantage of using an 144Hz monitor, and they wouldn't have as much of an advantage because of it. Oh yeah, I should probably talk about 144Hz monitors. 144Hz monitors were popularized by this race, and they would go on to make their way into all the best player setups. Basically, an 144Hz monitor can display more frames a second. It certainly isn't fake skill like some people would have you believe, but it definitely gives you an advantage in any game you play. It wouldn't be until later that people realized that it was more useful in Geometry Dash than most other games because of the in-game physics, as shown by Quasar in this video. The ship goes higher when the game is in 60Hz, making it easier to straight fly in 144 this is a seemingly small difference until you get into straight flying through extremely tight places. You wouldn't really notice much of a difference on easier levels. But no doubt, 144Hz is easier than 60 for straight fly. This wouldn't matter for the vast majority of people, because most of the people who were playing Bloodbath were only playing it for the fun of playing such a hard level. And at the time, most people thought that they could never beat it. Beating a level like Bloodbath on 144Hz is still really hard after all. 
Some of these first few players that would upload progress would continue playing the level and try to get to the newest percent. People were recording videos of themselves getting to the Michigan part, which was only at 25%. And these videos were a big deal for a while. The gameplay in Bloodbath was hard enough to make any ordinary gamer rage. And for people to beat this, they would need skill on par with Riot. For most of the community, getting past the first shit part was a challenge. Since there was so little straight fly in levels back then, and not too many people actually knew how to do it. This would all change with the first wave of contenders. These would be two veterans of the game, Smokes and Sandstorm. Smokes was the only player who made notable progress in 2015. He was previously known for beating a few really hard demons as well as creating some levels. He played on 120Hz and was at the head of the race for a while after the level was released. 120Hz may not sound like much of an advantage now, but in 2015 most of the top players were playing on 60, so Smokes already kind of had an advantage. The reason 144Hz is so much better than 60 is 144 is not a multiple of 60. And if you don't have a frame rate of 60, 120, 180, 240, and so on, the game does some weird stuff. This affects the gravity in the game which can make ship gameplay a lot easier. He didn't get the bonus of the Hertz exploit with non-multiples of 60, but he did get more frames in the game which can make things easier. He started with 25% on the day that Bloodbath came out, August 15th, and would inch closer in the next few days with 27% and 34%. The level at this point wasn't Smoke's biggest goal to be. He continued playing easier levels and uploading them to his YouTube channel, but he always had Bloodbath in the background. He was able to get 52 to 86 on the 6th of December, and then 37% at the beginning of 2016, which at the time was the best in the world. But after this, Smokes wouldn't go any further with Bloodbath. Smokes would go on to beat much harder levels on 120Hz and impress everyone with his creating skills, but we wouldn't get anything Bloodbath related from him until the race was already over. Unfortunately, Sandstorm's back catalog has been privated or deleted, with his channel being now focused more on Brawlhalla. As of now, he's the number one player in the world for Brawlhalla. He's actually pretty successful with his Brawlhalla videos, more so than Geometry Dash, which isn't the case with most people who leave the game. So I'll just use some of the gameplay that's up on his channel now. Sandstorm didn't have the advantage of playing 120 or 144 hertz, but he did have some notable accomplishments on 60. Sandstorm was a fan favorite and considered the third best at the time, only behind Riot and Cyclic, who would be exposed for hacking all of his notable achievements. Sandstorm was the first player to legitimately beat Cataclysm, with it being hack verified by G-Boy and hack completed by Cyclic, and Riot beating it a few days after Sandstorm. He would make some pretty significant progress on the first half and have some good runs on the second. I couldn't get the dates exact because the videos are deleted, but I do remember these runs happening in early January. But just like Smokes, Sandstorm was held back by his monitor's refresh rate. He would go on to beat it with a bypass that let his game run at 144Hz. A bypass doesn't necessarily make the game as easy as an actual 144Hz monitor, but it certainly helps people that don't have access to it. Sandstorm went back and beat it very quickly on 144Hz. This just shows how big of an advantage it gives you with this level. Sandstorm would prove to be one of the best players to come out of this race, and he would spend unreal amounts of time on Bloodbath but not having that 144Hz monitor was enough to hold him back. He wouldn't go any further in the race. The last 60Hz player who would lead the race was Mabby01. He wasn't that involved with the community, and he was kind of a small channel compared to Smokes and Sandstorm. He doesn't have as much history as those two, but at the time he was arguably a better player than both of them. He set three different records over the course of the Bloodbath race. On January 2nd, he set a new record of 61%, and then later got 66, and then 71. Mabby didn't have too much proof to back up his completions, but the community typically believes players when they give progress updates a certain percent, even if those updates are hacked, which we know they can be now. I don't think Mabby hacked his progress considering he never beat Bloodbath. A hacker would have definitely followed through. Mabby would continue to play Geometry Dash on his channel, but he would focus on other levels. The rest of the race would mainly be between two 144Hz players.
Unfortunately, Surf has privated all of his older Bloodbath videos, so I had to do some serious digging to find this gameplay, which is why the quality is so low. Luckily, I do have specific dates because I scripted this video a pretty long time ago. Serve was easily the most skilled player in the race. He was a creator and had beat some hard demons in 2014 and 2015, but didn't hit the big leagues until 2016. He had made most of his popularity by streaming himself beating Cataclysm in a 12-hour hardcore gaming session. At the time, nobody had beat a level this hard in that amount of time, and not too many people today are able to do that. So a lot of people were wondering where he would go next. It only made sense for him to try for Bloodbath and win the race. Once Serv stepped in, the relationship between him and the other people trying to beat Bloodbath was pretty hostile. At least it appeared that way back then. Serv had a tendency to act really egotistical and full of himself. Despite this, he had a pretty big part of the community's support in this race. The people really just wanted to see someone bring Bloodbath down. Quasar was another 144Hz player, and has possibly the coolest set of icons in Geometry Dash history. He was much lesser known than Serve at the time, and didn't have much to his name besides previously beating Cataclysm, and being the best in the world at Straight Fly. Straight Fly, as you may know, is a really big part of Bloodbath, so Quasar would have an easier time with the ship than Serve and other players like Mavi01. He would start uploading Bloodbath progress on February 8th, 2016, when he got 42 to 79 percent. Impressive for sure, but we had already seen this footage from other people. He followed that up with a video simply titled Swag, which was him completing the entire second half of the level. In the description of the level, he revealed that he had spent 13k attempts on the level and showed no signs of stopping. Then on February 5th, he got to 39 percent, and on February 25th, he got past the whole first half. This is the point where a lot of people started to take Quasar a lot more seriously. And since at this point Serve still wasn't in the race, he was the only person making any notable progress on Bloodbath. The race had its final two contenders. Both of these players were rising in skill and popularity, and both were using the same hardware as Riot did. It was clear that one of them would be the first to beat Bloodbath. <laughs> February 26th. This was the day Serve beat Cataclysm, and also the day that he set his sights on Bloodbath. He wasted no time in trying to beat it. At the time, the record was 71% still held by Mabby01, but Mabby was slowing down on his Bloodbath progress, and Serve was progressing on Bloodbath really quickly. The race between Serve and Quasar was on, each player putting multiple hours a day into trying to beat Bloodbath and Quasar initially had the upper hand. He had been uploading progress longer and likely had more attempts than Surf, and it was gonna be pretty hard for Surf to catch up with Mabby and Quasar, but that wouldn't stop him from trying. Surf may have been able to beat Cataclysm in one day, but Bloodbath was an entirely different story. Cataclysm is much more inconsistent, and it has a lot of parts that really aren't that hard and it's easier than Bloodbath in general. Bloodbath requires a lot more practice and patience to be consistent with. This was going to be a serious challenge for both players. To start off March, Quasar would progress even more on Bloodbath, and he uploaded a video of himself getting to 61%. I feel like Mabby. I'm Mabby now. After this, he would catch the flu and not stream all that much for the next few days. He uploaded a video of himself beating Diatomic Integration by TMN Gaming, as a little bit of a break from Bloodbath. After he got over his flu, Quasar would practice Bloodbath on stream and would get multiple good runs. Things were looking good for Quasar. He seemed to be leading the race for Bloodbath and was making good progress on it. And even with the minor setback, he seemed really optimistic. Quasar was set to beat Bloodbath soon and he was growing his YouTube channel because of it. Quasar kept the advantage in the race because of his consistency and the number of attempts that he had. He still didn't have the record, but he did have the most momentum, and most people who were keeping up with the race considered him as the most likely to win, but nobody could have guessed what would happen next.
Just two weeks after February, Surf would make the biggest fail in Geometry Dash history. He got 96% on Bloodbath. He almost beat it, with the hardest parts behind him, but he couldn't pass the ball part at the very end. Surf had almost beat the level, but he died at one of the easiest timings of the whole thing. It goes without saying that this would be a bit disappointing for him. I'd die at 98% on Forsaken Neon, and then quit the level entirely and never come back to it. So it must have been disappointing for Surf to die at 96% on the hardest level in the game. Even the calmest of gamers would rage at a death like this so far into the level. Serve had basically proven that he could beat Bloodpath at this point, and he only had a few timings left. This, at the time, was the worst fail in the history of the game. And if you look at any GD fail compilation, this clip is sure to be in there. This was a pretty unfortunate moment for him and his fans. But at this point, everybody knew that Serve could beat Bloodbath. It was just a matter of controlling his nerves, staying on, and getting there again. Surf had this race in the bag. Second place at the time was still held by Mabio 1, at only 71%. All Surf had to do was get 4% more of the way through the level, and be the first victor of Bloodbath. But unfortunately for Surf, shortly after this, Quasar would upload a video of himself getting to 77% on March 11th, and then, just two days later, Quasar came in in the last few days and took the race from Serve. Serve would not like the reaction at the end, and he would make a public statement saying that he was offended by it. Most people at the time thought he was being pretty unreasonable, since Quasar said, get wrecked Serve in the heat of the moment. And yeah, it was pretty petty of Serve to make a whole video on an honestly pretty harmless statement. But Serve had a lot of time put into the level, and it's not too out of the ordinary for something like that to anger someone. Serve doesn't like it when people refer to this moment as the reason he quit Geometry Dash for a short period after, but it mostly was. He would come back to be the second victor of Bloodbath a little while after Quasar, and he would prove to be the best Geometry Dash player of that time. At some points, even better than Riot. Quasar went on to start verifying Bloodlust, a sequel to Bloodbath made by Manix, but soon dropped it due to finger pains. After that, he made a level called Quiper, which is honestly a pretty cool 2.0 effect level that only uses the wave. Rate Quiper. He would then go on a hiatus until just recently. Serve went on to verify a few different extreme demons, and was even chosen by Riot to verify Yadigarasu, but we all know he didn't follow through on that. So that's the story of the race to beat Bloodbath. Over the course of 8 months, the best players in the game tried to be the first to beat it. Bloodbath will always remain one of the best and most iconic extreme demons of all time, and it'll continue to inspire people to get better at the game in order to beat it. Even more interesting is more people on 60Hz have beat Bloodbath now, and there are even victors on mobile. Yeah. Nowadays over 250 people have beat it, but it still remains a fan favorite because of its interesting history. And some people may try to replicate it, but that's going to be extremely hard to do because of how well put together the community was at that point. This level will always be remembered as a defining characteristic of the 1.9 era of Geometry Dash, and this race will go down as the best of all time. 